So today I figured, let's talk about chemotherapy. Now I've wanted to make a video like this for a while. After your diagnosis with cancer, the next thing that you obviously have to consider is chemotherapy. This becomes really a scary concept to then have to imagine being your reality. And so I think the fear of chemotherapy comes from what we are both shown in these dramas and from perhaps also an actual lack of knowledge that we have about chemotherapy. You're not stupid, Karen. No, I am actually. I'm failing almost everything. Now, even as a medical student, I must make a confession. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I can confidently say before all of this, I didn't understand chemotherapy very well. I mean, I'd studied it, I'd been taught about it, I'd learned it, sort of roughly applied it, but I didn't really quite understand it, I'd say, sufficiently enough. But, as a patient undergoing chemotherapy, I learned a lot about it. And fast. Like, really, really fast. Because after your diagnosis, everything happens so, so quick. And another interesting thing you learn that once you're a patient, is that some of your best mentors when it comes to your chemotherapy is actually the other patients around you because they just share their experiences with you and are uh, eager to tell you about all the symptoms that they experienced during treatment and how they resolve them. And that sort of, I think, relays into why I want to do this video to maybe share my patient experience to help provide that for others as well. So I want to talk about chemotherapy. There are so many elements. So I've decided I'm gonna have to do this in a two-part series so I'm not rushing anything and I get the main points across. So the first part is gonna be looking at the five W's of chemotherapy. The who, what, where, when, why. And part two is gonna be looking at the side effects of chemotherapy. So let's begin part one with the five W's of chemotherapy. So first, who? Now chemotherapy, as we're aware, is typically used to treat cancers. The five aims when we consider chemotherapy as a treatment. One, to cure a specific cancer. Two, to control tumor growth when a cure is impossible. Three, to shrink tumors before surgery or radiation therapy. Four, to relieve symptoms such as pain. Five, to destroy microscopic cancer cells that may be present after the known tumor is removed and you're just doing that extra bit of work to really reduce all the cancer there. This is what's also known as adjuvant therapy. So really when you're looking at who, those, those are the five aims and the goals that help us determine who will receive chemotherapy. And so in my case, we're looking at number one, which is to cure a specific cancer, which in my case is acute myeloid leukemia. Now the number two of the five W's is what? So what is chemotherapy? Well, today is gonna to be a good chance to show you. So you often will imagine it as maybe dark rooms, bubbling chemicals, really, really scary images. But really, it's just bum bags. Yep, that is my chemotherapy. I am an outpatient with chemotherapy. I often like to refer to myself as Fanny Pack Man because I am loaded. So let's show you what chemotherapy actually looks like. So this is my bum bag that the chemotherapy is in. There's a nice viewing window to actually look at the machine. And so if you actually open it up, this is the machine. So this top part is the pump. And the bottom part is chemotherapy. So you are actually looking at chemotherapy and this particular drug is cytarabin. And that's my chemotherapy. You can see there, this is due in five hours. And that's chemotherapy. It's really just that simple. To address the what of chemotherapy, that. <laughs> just this fanny pack, and to the observant of you, I'm also on another fanny pack. And this is with my antibiotics, uh, flucloxacillin, and this is just to handle a little infection I got a few weeks ago. Unfortunately, it put me in hospital for a bit longer than I wanted. Now, more to the what of the chemotherapy. So, I, am going, I have five cycles of chemotherapy in total. Now what a cycle of chemotherapy normally means is you have the administration of the chemotherapy and then what happens after you have chemotherapy is that all of your immune cells tend to drop down almost to zero and then they come back up. But between starting chemotherapy and your cells going down to then back up, this window here, that's the one cycle. And so I have five cycles of being given chemo and if my cells go down, 
and then back up. And that's the whole goal. And more specifically, for my five cycles, my first one is what you call the induction. Now induction is normally what you refer to for the first chemotherapy cycle. And the goal of this chemotherapy cycle is to completely reduce and slash or destroy the cancer cells that are present. Because this is the first cycle that you have when you're diagnosed. So this means the cancer is greatest at this stage. Give that induction cycle to really take it down and reduce it to almost zero. This way you can get the most side effects and complications, which in my experience, I did. My next four cycles are what we refer to as consolidation. So consolidation therapy is essentially where we're looking at our cancer's already been brought down by induction, and then with consolidation, we're keeping the cancer as low as we possibly can, and hopefully keep it in a cure status slash rate hopefully that works out. So we have induction and consolidation over five cycles to hopefully get a cure with the leukemia. If you wanna know the more technical aspects, induction therapy for me, with my case of acute myeloid leukemia, I was given cytarabin and dianorubicin as the drugs. And then for consolidation, I have what's called HIDAC, which is high dose administered cytarabin. And right now I'm on my fifth cycle. So that means this is my last cycle of chemotherapy. This is my day three, and that means by day five, I'll be given my last bag of chemotherapy, and then this is hopefully my last chemo that I'll ever receive, so really hoping that's gonna be the case, because <laughs> you just don't imagine this day coming, I have to say, at the beginning. You know it's, you're told it's gonna come, but for it to actually happen is just absurd. It's just you don't even conceptualize it, so I'm really, really excited for that, to say the least. Now we've done who, we've done what, now where. So, the administration of the chemotherapy goes into my PIC line. Now what PIC stands for is Peripherally Inserted Central Catheter. And so I have a bandage on my arm here. And what I'll do is I'll show you. What we have here is we have a tube, you can see that goes directly into my arm. And then coming out of that tube externally, we have two bunks. They pump the chemotherapy and the antibiotics into these, which then go into my arm. Now for the PIC line, it doesn't just stop there and then administer from my arm. This line actually goes all the way into just above my heart here. And so that's what makes it a central catheter, but is inserted peripherally. And these are great, absolute lifesavers, because what that means is I don't need to get catheters continuously inserted every time I need something administered. And instead, we can use a PIC line. So I love them really really good devices but that's my where for chemotherapy now the when for chemotherapy now i've already sort of explained the cycles but really from the point of diagnosis i was diagnosed on the tuesday i was admitted on the wednesday and i started my chemotherapy friday night so why chemotherapy particularly for acute myeloid leukemia now typically you hear cancers being spoken about as either being a solid or fluid cancer and so leukemia is what you call a fluid cancer, meaning it's not like it's a solid tumor growth per se, it actually more affects the cells that are in the blood and those immune cells. So what you'll typically see is that when you're dealing with a fluid cancer, such as leukemia, chemotherapy is the best route to target it because radiotherapy is kind of like aiming a gun and shooting it with a specific aim in mind. But with leukemia, because it's a fluid cancer, there's no one single target and therefore you need to give something like chemotherapy that can go all around to get everywhere in the bone marrow where the leukemia is growing. So that's why chemotherapy is preferred for leukemia opposed to something like radiotherapy. And that really concludes what I would consider to be my five W's for chemotherapy. So thanks for watching. I hope this has been really helpful for you. Hopefully the next one will be just as good, if not better. That's part two of my chemotherapy series where I'm gonna be talking about the side effects next. Uh, particularly my own experience in those side effects and what that really meant during my experience and how those around me also handled it as well because that's a big part of it as well. So hopefully you can join me with that and hopefully it'll be good for next time. All right, thanks so much for listening and see you in the next one. Um, if you could leave a like and subscribe, just push the button down below, just, just there, that's it, just there, the red button. It means a lot. Um, I've been getting amazing feedback from these videos and hopefully it'll be good for next time. All right, thanks so much for listening and see you in the next one.